First of all, thanks uh, to the organizers for, uh, as has been said before, for, for keeping alive this this, uh, this nice meeting. Uh, it has been 20 years, right? Almost. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so what I will talk about today is some... Well, it's partially based on some work uh, that I've done recently in collaboration with uh, Christian Agendorf and uh, Alexis Morin Duchesne, who are, or who are in uh, Louvain La Neuve. Okay, so I will talk about some computation of some observable, the, the emptiness formation probability and the, the bound, its boundary version for the six vertex model at a particular point, uh, which is a delta equal to minus a half, uh, and I will try to explain why this, uh, I mean, uh, why this point is special and uh, how can we do computation in that, uh, in that case. Uh, okay, so let me start with some general, some bold uh, statement about uh, XXZ uh, spin chain. So, well, I think everybody knows uh, what, uh, uh, what the Hamiltonian of the XZ spin chain is. Uh, well, what we are, uh, as physicists, uh, usually interested in, uh, we, we have been interested for, I mean, uh, I mean, I was not born, but for 100 years, so almost uh, our spectral properties of the Hamiltonian, cal calculation of uh, correlation function. Uh, uh, nowadays, we are interested in properties out of equilibrium, transport, blah, 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 all this, uh, all this stuff. And we have developed a lot of techniques to deal with this, uh, with all these kind of problems. Uh, and, well, in particular, well, we are in a, in a it's a conference about the integrability, so the, the, the main uh, tool, everything is turning basically around the, the integrability in uh, whatever sense it is of this, of this model. Okay? And uh, what, in general, I would say that uh, what integrability allows us uh, is to do computation, and, but at the end of the day, we are able to gain a rather explicit uh, results only in the thermodynamic limit. Well, that's already much, but uh, let's say we are uh, neat uh, formulas most of the time uh, we, when we go to the thermodynamic limit, when we take large, uh, uh, large chains. Okay? And, uh, well, what about finite size expression? So can, uh, are there any cases in which uh, you have uh, finite size expression that uh, can be computed and can be, well, really written down explicitly? And uh, maybe, well, um, can give a test of, uh, of uh, finite size correction to formulas uh, that are uh, available at uh, in the thermodynamic limit at large n. Okay. Um, so what's special? Uh, uh, a case in which uh, this sort of uh, computation can be uh, taken through the end basically is the well is the case in which the anisotropy delta, which well, was there before, delta. So the, coefficient would multiply sigma z, sigma z, is equal to minus a half. There's something um, special which happens at, at, uh, at, that, uh, at that point. And this was a remark, uh, basically, just numeric, uh, after numerics of Razumov and Stroganov some 20 years ago. Okay, so they noticed that the following, uh, the following that uh, if you take a chain with uh, odd size, uh, okay, uh, and periodic boundary condition, well, here is the important information, is that uh, the, the, you have an exact eigenstate of, of the energy, the ground state, actually. It is uh, as an energy which is uh, equal to minus 3, 4 over n. Well, the point is that there are no finite size correction. So it's, it's exact, uh, and there are no finite size uh, terms here. It's not just a large n uh, term of an expansion. It's, it's really exact. And the same, uh, well, here, in the, for the periodic case, there are... Uh, in the, um, uh, these ground states are in the sector of spin, uh, well, either spin one or uh, total spin one or minus one. Total magnetization, sorry, one or uh, plus or minus one. And, uh, and there, are a, there is a second case in which you have also some, uh, some property of the energies, uh, so some energy, exact formula for the energy without any finite size correction. Uh, and it is the case uh, of uh, uh, an even size chain with a twisted periodic boundary condition. So there is a twisting uh, here, which is a twist of uh, a square root, uh, cubic root of one. Okay. 
And uh, well, at that point, people started investigating uh, the properties of the ground states. So, uh, if uh, there, are, uh, there is anything special in the observables and in, in, in the wave function itself of the ground state at, uh, uh, for delta equal minus a half, uh, and then well, th there were some amazing um, well, things uh, popping out. Uh, Namely, they, they, if you fix a model normalization in, um, in a particular way, well, say that you normalize in such a way that uh, uh, when you have consecutive spin-ups and then consecutive spin-downs, uh, you get just one, then there are some uh, overlaps or, or overlap with the nail state uh, or uh, overlap with this uh, combination of uh, up and down uh, and, uh, well, the norm of the state that are given in terms of uh, some numbers, okay, they, they, they are written here, H, uh, A, H, T, A, N, which turns out uh, to be integers, okay? And, uh, well, they appear ev everywhere, so I will not mm, read all the list of, this, uh, of these results. So they, this was, just let, let me repeat, these are, at the time, were just uh, numerical observations, okay? And, uh, well, all these uh, numbers here are integers, uh, well, apart here there was square root of an integer, and they turned out to, uh, count something, okay? So this a n, which appear here, for example, where here you have uh, the, the overlap with this, the ground state uh, up with the nail state is the num is this a n, and this a n is uh, a count, uh, what people in combinatorics call the uh, uh, alternating sign matrices. Uh, for us, they are just uh, configurations of the six vertex model. So six vertex model is a uh, I recall is a model is a vertex model in which you have uh, um, an equal number of uh, arrow in and arrow out at any at any vertex. So there are six possible configurations. So you put the six vertex model on a um, um, on a square, okay? So on a, on a square grid uh, n by n with domain wall boundary conditions. So spin up uh, arrow pointing up out uh, in the top and the bottom border. In, uh, in the left, sorry, left and right border. And so the, and you count how many configurations do you have there. Okay, so that's, uh, that turns out to have, uh, to, to be this AN appearing in, uh, as uh, our uh, overlap in the, in the, in the ground state of the uh, XZ uh, spin chain. And uh, what I want to emphasize for the, for, for the next uh, is, uh, for the following of the, of the talk is that this is a, a quite neat uh, factorized formula. So you have an explicit, uh, nice fact factorized formula, uh, which is given usually in terms, uh, I mean, in this case and in many other cases in terms of product of uh, ratio of factorials. The other guy appearing the, in the formula before is the number of uh, after-turn alternating sign matrices or configuration of the six vertex model which are invariant under, under the 80 uh, rotation, degree rotation. Okay, and, and they also have some nice, uh, some nice formula. So even if you forget about, uh, so there is all uh, a branch of the story which uh, investigates relation with, uh, with combinatorics and that I will not enter uh, uh, in this talk here, but even if you forget about all this part about combinatorics, uh, still uh, you have some observable, some observable that have, uh, or some overlaps, uh, that have nice explicit formulas, okay, that you, could ask uh, why it is the case, or can I really compute them and prove this uh, this uh, this kind of formulas? Okay, so I've cited a certain number of people. So these were must uh, uh, up to here were must uh, mostly conjecture, and then from Di Francesco, Zinjustan, Zuber, they started coming the first proofs. Uh, for example, they proved that uh, this case here. I will mention briefly, I mean, I will mention the techniques that, that they use because they are the same things that we will use to compute other observables and basically all of them. Okay, so, uh, well, the first one that I want to discuss is the emptiness formation probability. One case of emptiness formation probability we have already seen here was a particular one. It, it's already hidden in this, I mean, not hidden, but it's already there in this overlap, basically, um, but of boundary emptiness formation probability, sorry. And what is this? Well, you start, you, in the ground state, you um, 
compute the probability of, of having a string, uh, say of length uh, m, so you have m consecutive uh, spin, which uh, points all in the up direction, okay? So this, this expectation value in the ground state of uh, projection on spin up uh, from site, uh, say, 1 up to, uh, well, what did they say, k, okay? Uh, so, what, what is known about this observable, what were done about this observable at the beginning of, the, of uh, this, uh, this century, <laughs> um, were some results some result based uh, on bosonization of, uh, the, of the spin chain by, well, uh, Korepin, uh, Luciano collaborator, Shiroishi and collaborator, and, well, these are mostly the, the, the one based on, uh, on, on, uh, on, uh, on bosonization, and they, they were able to extract uh, some, give some arguments uh, for uh, um, the, the behavior of uh, the, this observable for large k. Okay, and then these uh, these results were put on a more uh, rigorous uh, basis by uh, the group of uh, Lyon groups uh, group of um, the Jean Maillet collaborator. Um, Jean-Michel <laughs> Maillet, a collaborator, um, what they were using, a, uh, uh, well, using integrability and uh, using the uh, computation of, uh, of uh, uh, well, using basic answers to basically be, were able to prove this, uh, this, kind of, uh, this kind of behavior. Okay, then there are also some, there were also some results of finite temperature, uh, these also are these are mostly based on, on uh, again on bosonization of of the spin chain uh, and they argue they, they have some leading term here uh, in the exponential which is proportional to k and then uh, there were some uh, uh, also some rigorous result at, um, for the x y chain by Franchini and Abanov uh, at uh, at uh, t equals zero okay and all these results are in the thermodynamic limit, okay? But uh, in, the, in, the, in their original paper, Razumov and Stroganov, they gave uh, a conjecture for uh, the exact finite size expression for the emptiness formation probability in a chain, uh, uh, sorry, this N is, uh, well, depend on the parity. So you get capital, a, capital N, uh, is equal either to 2n or 2n plus 1. Well, depending on the parity, I mean, you have uh, explicit formula. So for the periodic case, uh, the length of the chain is 2n. Uh, for, the, uh, for, the, for the even case, uh, uh, periodic even case, the length of the chain is 2n. For the, uh, for the twisted periodic case, sorry, the chain is length of 2n. And for the periodic case is 2n plus, 2 small n plus, plus 1. Okay, so they gave uh, some explicit formulas, and uh, actually, so these are, uh, again, a finite, uh, finite n. Uh, what, um, well, Kitanin, uh, uh, Maillet, et Terras were able to compute was the asymptotic for a large n. So the, uh, take, take this formula, send n to infinity, you can extract, uh, and this was a conjecture by that the result was conjectured by Razumov and Strogonov, and, and, and these people were able to compute exactly that, uh, to obtain this result here. But numeric, I mean, you can compute explicitly for small sizes the, the, the ground state, you, you just, I mean, brute force, uh, and nothing really deep. Uh, uh, but the point is that you have integers and, and while taking ratio, ratio, actually what they did, uh, already you see here there are ratios, uh, and what they computed were ratios of ratios, uh, and well, they, 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 they uh, identified uh, basically this, that factor of a small size, and then, uh, well. And, and, and this is what, uh, uh, well, well, sometimes ago I've been, I've been able to, to prove this kind of, uh, this kind of results. And I want to explain well, soon <laughs> uh, how to get there. And, but before getting there, I want to motivate a, a second observable, and that is the one that uh, 
we have uh, com computed for the first time in collaboration with Alexi and, uh, and Christian, uh, and, and which is uh, what we call the boundary emptiness solution probability, and what is this? Uh, but actually, if you look, if you think a second, uh, uh, one can reinterpret the, the emptiness formation probability as uh, some, ob some observer in the six vertex model. So I formulated that as a, as a problem for the XXZ uh, spin chain, but actually, where you can equ equivalently say that uh, this is the probability, so this ratio here is the probability in, uh, for the six vertex on an uh, infinite uh, cylinder of uh, uh, horizontal radius n of getting uh, uh, capital k, um, small k uh, arrow pointing uh, in the up direction on an horizontal line, on a given horizontal line. Okay, so this is a uh, this is missing. This is a ratio of uh, partition functions. Okay, and uh, it turns out to, to you can prove that uh, I argue that you get the same uh, the same quantity. Okay. Just by translate, just by considering a transfer matrix approach, and uh, in the infinite limit, uh, it is the, the 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 state with maximal eigenvalue which dominates, and that corresponds to our ground state. So, uh, usual stuff basically. And then uh, you, you have this observable. So you get a, an alternative interpretation of uh, our observable. But in this setting, um, it is also natural to consider another one, which is less natural on the XZ uh, uh, side of the story, which is a boundary one. Okay, so now you take a half infinite uh, cylinder. So here you have to think of, uh, I was a bit lazy, I didn't draw the, 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 the lattice of, the six, of uh, the six vertex model, okay? So you have to think of a half, in uh, half infinite cylinder, okay? You take a ratio of partition function, in which, uh, on one side, while well, you take free boundary conditions uh, on the bottom, okay, and well, who cares what happens on the other side? It's infinite anyway. And on the other side, you, you say it is free on some part of the of the boundary, and then uh, for um, m consecutive uh, spin, you put the, uh, the uh, m consecutive um, bonds. You put uh, arrow pointing up. Okay, and uh, well, if you redo the same reasoning that one can do for the for the evidence formation probability, then what you end up with is that uh, this observable, basically, this is nothing else. Uh, this ratio of uh, partition function is nothing else than the overlap uh, of our ground state of the x x z spin chain uh, with uh, a state of this form. So here you have a projection on spin up uh, in the, on the M sides, and then you have free boundary condition on the other capital N minus M uh, sides. Okay? So these are the quantities that we were, we were interested in. Uh, why? Well, because uh, of numerics. Well, we did some numerics first, and then uh, we realized uh, that uh, uh, they were given by, again, uh, we didn't have any... Um, combinatorial interpretation of the numbers that we found, but still we had some nice uh, uh, product formulas for those, uh, for those objects. Uh, and from that one, you can also extract some uh, asymptotic limit for n to infinity. Well, I'm not really an expert in uh, field theory, but apparently my collaborator told me that uh, there are some terms that should be also universal, whatever that means. Um, okay. so. Uh, and well, we, we first we conjecture that uh, those form, and then we develop some techniques to compute and then prove the prove the form. How much time? You have Fifteen minutes. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, okay. So uh, let me already tell you very quickly what's special. Uh, something which is special at delta from the, from the algebraic point of view. What is special at delta equal to minus uh, half? Well, it turns out that uh, the spin chain uh, with the uh, um, uh, parity si size parity that I told you and, and periodic or twisted periodic boundary conditions, at least in the zero momentum sector, uh, turns out to be supersymmetric. So there are some supersymmetry generators. So the, you can write the, so the projector of H on the, on the um, zero momentum sector, actually, so it's not the full H, not the full Hamiltonian, only in the, in the, the zero momentum sector is a, is a, is, can be written as an anti commutator of uh, some, uh, some uh, supersymmetric charge. 
Well, then there are some relations with uh, the denser one loop model, which is a stochastic and uh, has some nice, uh, some nice properties. But the main point that uh, we'll emphasize uh, in the following is, is the third one uh, that will, is really crucial for basically doing com computation is the way one can use uh, integrability for computing uh, those quantity in this uh, uh, delta equal to minus a half. Uh, and I can, what, what the, the story is that uh, uh, you can express, one can express the, the ground state uh, 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 the formula in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a certain way uh, as uh, in terms of solution of uh, quantum kinesis homologic of uh, equations uh, and then build up on those equations to uh, then do the computations. And this was a, well, well, a very fundamental remark done by Di Francesco and, and Z. Justin in 2004. Okay, so now maybe, well, I can go maybe quickly on the, on the integrability part of the story. Well, there is an R matrix. Uh, this is the R matrix of the, of the six vertex model. Well, I parameterize in the, in this way. So these are the weights of the, of the six uh, configurations of the, of the six vertex model. Um, one cons well, well, this is, uh, R matrix uh, satisfies young, young Buster equations, uh, commutation with the twist, uh, and then, well, one build, uh, well, here the one main point is that we are going to consider not just the transfer matrix, but the inhomogeneous transfer matrix. So transfer matrix in which we have, uh, well, of course, the horizontal spectral parameter, but also we can introduce also vertical spectral parameter per each, uh, per, uh, each param uh, one parameter per side. Okay, well, let's trace uh, in the usual way. Uh, trace over the auxiliary space of product of R matrices and the twist. Uh, we have commutativity, so, um, and uh, a community of transfer matrices for different horizontal spectral parameters. Well, this is really rather standard, I mean, standard stuff, at least for uh, oh, uh, this audience. And, um, and then the Hamiltonian of uh, the, the delta, the, the spin chain is, uh, is just the, the logarithmic derivative. Uh, for, uh, uh, with respect to, uh, to the horizontal spectral parameter, four uh, vertical parameters equal to one. Okay, so you take the homogeneous case, of course. Okay, but the crucial observation of uh, Razimov Stroganov is, is interesting, and we're able to prove actually that uh, the inhomogeneous one, so that if you consider the, the inhomogeneous one that was defined before, okay, so this guy here, okay, was defined there. For those uh, parities and Either 2n and uh, uh, twisted, bond, uh, twisted periodic boundary condition, or 2n plus 1n periodic boundary condition. Uh, the transformation is a very simple and factorized, uh, uh, well, a rational function, uh, um, eigenvalue which is a rational function, very simple, uh, simply written in terms of the weight uh, a, to a and b of uh, of the six vertex uh, model. Okay, and. Uh, those eigenvalues, I mean, the, the, eigen, the corresponding eigen, eigenstates uh, uh, now depends on, on, the, on the z, but these are precisely the ones that uh, once you put z equal to one, corresponds to the ground states of the, of, of, of the spin chain, okay? So the idea is uh, somehow to uh, consider instead of those guys here, these are the, the ground states of my original spin chain, uh, to consider the eigenstates of the inhomogeneous transfer Okay, and uh, well, this was this is a half of the story. So, first of all, you can argue that uh, since this is a rational function, uh, those guys uh, are, ratio, uh, are can be normalized to be polynomials in the spectral parameters. So, you have uh, instead of having uh, some complicated uh, well, uh, in function, they, they're, they're, they're just uh, they're just polynomials, uh, and. Uh, on top of that, and this is really the crucial point, is that uh, uh, um, they, they are characterized. Um, if you par if you if you normalize them to be polynomial with uh, uh, um, uh, uh, co-prime po polynomial, sorry, they are, they they are characterized by as solutions uh, of some uh, uh, specialization of the quantum case, uh, kinesis homologic of equation at q equal to 2 pi, uh, well, cubic root of, uh, of 1. 
Okay, so what are these uh, QKZ equations? So there are, they are, uh, they, they, they've been introduced first by Smirnov uh, uh, at the end of the 80s in the, in the study of uh, uh, computation of form factors in, quant in um, quantum integrable field theories, and then uh, by put on a more uh, on an uh, on, a, on an algebraic uh, uh, setting by Frankel and Rishitik in uh, For us, I mean, uh, we will not really need all the theory. Actually, we will not really uh, need at all the theory of quantum kinesis homology of equ equation. Just and we not. I will just to I uh, uh, just want to state them. Uh, so what. The equation says the, the following is that uh, now you have uh, our state, which depends on the parameters z1, z2, z, 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 zn. Eh? If you act on the state with the operator r check, uh, well, r check is defined by taking r multiplying by the permutation operator. Okay, so if you multiply by r check at site uh, i with uh, corresponding spectral parameters zi and zi plus one, the ratio of the two. Okay, you obtain the same out, the same guy, but with the two spectral parameters exchanged. Okay, so you exchange basically two spectral parameters. And then you have a, a second equation, uh, which is actually a covariance under rotation. So in the, it, it looks uh, a bit complicated to state in the, for the full uh, uh, um, uh, UQSL uh, SL2 uh, case, but for us, uh, when yeah, there are some forms, but when, uh, since we are, we are working at cubic root of unity, these are all uh, basically one, okay? And what this tells you is that, uh, well, if you, if you turn your system by one, one step, uh, that is equivalent of, as uh, moving back the spectral parameters. Uh, okay, so you, you turn the system, and, uh, well, this is uh, the operator which turns the spins, uh, and the other guy is the operator acting, I mean, yeah, operator acting on, on, on function by turning the, 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 the variables, which is quite uh, rather natural, okay? And so just by using, uh, basically, just by using the, those, those equations, you don't really need uh, to, to, to dwell into the literature about uh, quantum kinesis homologic of equation. You can uh, already draw some, some important conclusions. First, you can fix the degree of your polynomials. Uh, and then uh, what you can do is you can find some recursion. So you can uh, specialize, uh, uh, by specializing uh, uh, some spectral parameter, you can uh, pass from the, sorry, pass from the periodic case to the, uh, to, from, yes, periodic even case to the, uh, well, this is plus one, of course, it is a mistake, to the, the, um, uh, to the odd case, uh, okay, and, uh, you can also move from the odd case to the even case, uh, and so on and so forth. So you reduce the, the, the size by one, okay, just by sending z to zero to infinity. But, but by playing basically with the spectral parameters, you can drive some this this kind of relation. And also, you can also specialize the spec consecutive spectral parameters in a particular way. Say z here done for the first two, but it's valid for any pairs, consecutive pairs. If you specialize, say, z2 equal to q squared z1, so you, you go uh, down by two, basically. In, uh, you, you, can, uh, you, you, you find that uh, the state here is equal to the one obtained uh, at size n minus two times, uh, well, there are some prefactor that you can work out, times uh, the, the singlet uh, uh, in, uh, on, on, the, on the first and second side, okay? So what is the stra uh, how much time? <laughs> Five minutes. Uh, you have set minutes. Set, okay. Well, then I can give you the strategy how to now do the computation. Eh? So do the computation is uh, well uh, instead of using uh, uh, instead of computing a matrix element between the, the ground state, uh, I will use my deformed ground state. So the, the, those eigenstates of the um, of the of the inhomogeneous transfer matrix. Uh, because I know that they satisfy, with respect, in, the, in that dependence on the, on the spectral parameter, I, I know that they satisfy some useful uh, relations uh, that allows me to find some recursions. Uh. And so, and so already the first step to introduce the, the, the right generalization uh, of the quantity that you want to, that you want to compute. Uh. 
So write in which sense? Uh, well, in the sense that you can do the second step. Uh, so to come out with some explicit formula, typically ratio of determinants, uh, uh, for the inhomogeneous, uh, say, inhomogeneous uh, emptiness formation probability or inhomogeneous boundary emptiness formation probability. And then the last step is once you have this, uh, this form which contains the, the, still contains the spectral parameters, you have to take the homogeneous limit. And, and this is rather subtle. I will mostly discuss uh, uh, what the first two, basically. Homogeneous limit is, 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 uh, is, uh, is, um, is rather technical. Uh, well, I'll quickly, quickly give you the, the answer for the EFP. Um, why do I want to, to say that? Because, uh, well, you see it's already subtle here. It's, it's, you're not just taking the expectation value between uh, this, the, the same state, uh, okay? So here on the left and on the right, you don't have the same state. You have the same Z uh, for the part in which you don't project, uh, but for the part in which you project, uh, you have to take different uh, values uh, for, the, for the bra and for, and for the cat. Uh, uh, you have to take different values of the y's for the bra and for the cat, okay? And uh, if you do that, uh, okay, if you do this, uh, if, you, if you consider this guy now, thanks to the exchange equation, so the first of the two QKZ equations, uh, so you have uh, some symmetries, properties, so this is symmetric in the z, it's symmetric in the y, in, in the y and uh, as a, uh, enough property in the sense uh, that characterize them completely in the sense uh, by, by specialization, uh, as I said, Z uh, going to zero or to one, uh, you can decrease the length of the, so you can decrease this number or, or pass from periodic to, uh, from even to odd, okay, and, uh, and from odd to even. Or you go down by two, by this specialization. And all these quanti all these uh, properties basically characterize uh, this quantity uniquely, okay? So if you come up with some formula that satisfies the same, uh, the same properties, then, uh, then you are done. And this is what we have, uh, what, I mean, this is a uh, paper of mine of some years ago, and, and I came out with an explicit formula for this guy, and I just give you for reference what it looks like. Uh, is, a, is a ratio of determinant of some matrix uh, divided by some van der Mond, okay? So some determinant of, of, uh, of a van der Mond matrix. Okay, so the matrix is uh, some form like this. So you get, uh, so you see it's really important that the y's are different. Uh, all the y's, because there are two sets of y's. If, if, uh, if you take the two sets of y's equal, uh, I mean, already here you have a problem in the matrix. This is already zero. You, you have a denominator which, uh, which vanishes as well. So you, you really need to take a different y's. Uh, it's, uh, and then from, from here, it's possible to take the, the homogeneous limit uh, uh, and, and, and prove the result. I think I have a couple of minutes. Uh, uh, I will apply the same idea for the boundary emptiness formation probability. And uh, I think it is enough that I give you the main new ingredient for this computation. Well, let's start from here. Well, the naive guess, uh, is uh, the following one. So you, you just in, in take the, your state with, um, with the Z, uh, the, with the um, spectral parameter, so the homogeneous uh, ground state, let's call, let's call it like that, and uh, you, you take the overlap with the boundary state that we defined before. But this is uh, ugly. I mean, there's, there's no property, there's no, there's no symmetry, there's, there's no recursion, there's nothing. Basically, it's, uh, it's, it's useless, this formula, like that. Okay, so the idea is, uh, well, that you have to replace uh, also the left-hand side of the, of, the, of the overlap. Okay, so, and how do you, uh, the, um, I, how do you uh, deform the, 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 the left-hand side? Well, you, in, you, you introduce basically some, so these are K matrices, okay? Uh, they're, they're usually you write six k in, in, in the up direction, so these are just written horizontally because I consider them as just a, a vector in C2 times, uh, times C2. Uh, they satisfy, I mean, I will just take a, a solution of the boundary young buster equation that satisfy the, the unitard, so the fish equation. Uh, so if you act with the R check matrix, uh, 
you just invert the spectral parameters and, uh, and uh, here the, the boundary young buster equation. Okay. Well, this is the most general solution that you have. Uh, uh, I think Sklian uh, wrote, uh, uh, this is just a different way of writing that, but that's, uh, that's it, uh, no more, no less. Okay, and the point is that uh, uh, what we want is that uh, this guy here, basically when you specialize to z equal one, we want all the coefficient to be equal. Okay, and, uh, and that's the choice that we have to do for this parameter. And so you introduce uh, basically this state. Okay, so in the projection part, you do nothing, but uh, in the part in which you have a free boundary condition, you just pair them uh, with a K matrix. Okay, and then you take uh, the overlap. Okay, and for that guy, we have uh, all the properties that we want. It's, it's, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice guy. It's symmetric, some as a recursion that uh, as a list of properties that that uh, characterize them uh, uniquely. Okay. And, uh, and, and, well, this is the first step, and the second step is to come out uh, with some uh, explicit expression, and we were able to find that one as well. So this is the, in this case of even uh, boundary condition, uh, uh, in, the, in the even case, uh, well, here is uh, the example of, of, uh, of the matrix that we, that, that we have. And in this case, uh, well, the, taking the, 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 the homogeneous limit was... Uh, still possible, but uh, since the matrix is more complicated than, was more complicated than the, the actual information one, um, was much more cumbersome, so it, um, some extra effort. Uh, was last, last slide. Okay, so um, perspective, uh, well, is that, uh, uh, as I said, that we are st in the, in the, um, the first uh, remark by Razumov and Stroganov that prompted a lot of uh, excitement in the in com both combinatorialist uh, community and f some integralist uh, community was motivated precisely by combinatorics, but still, uh, uh, even if you forget about combinatorics, there are uh, a lot of uh, observers that have uh, nice uh, expressions, uh, either factorized or maybe not. So. I, uh, I think with these techniques, uh, by using uh, the, the approach uh, of uh, pioneered by Di Francesco and Giustin, so using the, the, the inhomogeneous uh, state, uh, gives possibility to compute uh, ma much ma many more correlation functions. Uh, most of the time, they will not be uh, as nice as, as the empty transformation probabilities. They will not have some nice factorized form, but still, uh, um, I'm rather optimistic that they can, most of them can be written in terms of determinant of, uh, or, well, determinants or ratio of determinants. Uh. And then, well, of course, you can also play the game with the other boundary conditions. So we are, here, all the story was about uh, periodic or twisted periodic chain, but you can also think of uh, 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 open chains. And I think uh, Christian is working uh, on, uh, on that one, and then, uh, well, of course, you can uh, uh, consider IS spins and maybe also XYZ chain uh, at the combinatorial, uh, the combinatorial line. Uh, that's it. Okay, thank you. on your work, so I understand that at this uh, special combinatorial point, you have a very simple ground state where you function and can calculate more things. But the things which you put at the beginning, I, I disagree with. It have maybe has to do with uh, the fact that some of the work of the last 20 years is not so much known in this uh, unity of, of the first, but there is something which is called uh, factorization of correlation functions, and that was formalized in a theory improved in 2008 by Jimbo, and it states that basically you can factorize any static correlation function of any length of the XXZ chain in terms of two point functions for a chain of any length. And this implies that, implies that you can calculate, for instance, uh, say for the XXZ chain of any delta, the correlation function. Sigma 1, 
z is equal to 5 c to any numerical precision, uh, depending on the length, for any length. I find it okay. This, this was done. Uh, I wasn't aware. No, you didn't know. Uh, oh, thanks. Someone has said with your introduction, when you claim that uh, for the finite shape, only things are known that the data is minus 1. This is not true. Okay. No, well, well, I didn't want to say, maybe I was, uh, I was a bit bold in saying I'm not aware of anything that is done, but I, for sure what I wanted to point out is that uh, much less is known, at least, uh, at least much less is known in the finite size case than uh, in the infinite size. That was my... Well, I mean, on this abstract level of theory, a lot is known, um, the, the part of the relations are practically the thing. To do this for long uh, distances in a finite shape is... is uh, Practically difficult or impossible. But then there is another thing you can also then come from the finite size correction side. I mean, for instance, the whole factors here we are considering this car, well, we don't do for finite L, and we have control of the L to some nonlinear correction. So for the short distances, uh, for the short uh, distances in the correlation, for any L, you can use factorization, and for the longer distances, you can use, you can control finite size corrections by only <coughs> only correction techniques, and this is something which is known since the early 90s, I would say, and many people working on that. Okay. So, I have a, a small question. So, if we have not used the supersymmetry at that point, so uh, there is no added. Well, I, um, in this technique, no, in this case, for this computation, no, there are, uh, but still you can, uh, well, of course you can use uh, supersymmetry to, 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 for example, to prove the value of uh, I mean, this uh, fact that you don't have any finite size correction, so this uh, ground state energy can be proven by, um, for this was done by Fendley, Hagendorf, and others. And, um, well, there are some, some compute, there are some, uh, uh, overlaps that can be computed through the, the, um, using, uh, super, super symmetry, uh, but, but not this one. 